Well, g'day everyone. How's it going? Coming at you from the studio today. And in this video, I want to take you through my color grading process for Canon Log 3. And I've got a couple of ways that I do it, but I'm going to take you through first principles of how to get your grade dialed in from the raw Canon Log 3 footage. So without further ado, let's get straight into it and jump on over to the screen here and I'll take you through the process. So here we are on the screen and you're looking at a clip of me. So essentially this is the image that we're starting with and this is shot in Canon Log 3. Uh, I think I had, you know, if you look here, not a great looking image really because of this clipped highlights in the window here, but you can see that's the only thing that's clipped. The rest of it is all in detail. So because I'm not worried about information there in the window, uh, then it's fine, it's all good. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna check my skin exposure first and kind of get that dialed in. So what I'm gonna do is just take a circle here and just make sure I can see my power circle here and I'm just going to reduce this down to my skin on the lit side of my face right here. Uh, I'm just going to select this magic tool here to highlight this area. And I'm going to see here that my skin is sort of around about the 50% IRE. So that's not too bad. That's probably a little bit higher than I would normally want it. Actually, when I go and look at the exposure between light and dark, the average is around about 40% IRE if you're sitting around about here. Uh, and that's really good. That's where I want this to be. So the way I've shot this is really good for my skin tone. And so the fact that, you know, we're overexposed here in the highlights uh, isn't a big deal. And let's look at the shadows as well. Maybe the shadows here. So we're down at about 12.5% IRE. We've got the scope set up as percentage. So that's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with all of that. So from this point, my skin is around about the right exposure. So I can start to then add nodes in and correct. Now I'm using DaVinci Resolve and I'm doing a node based grade here, but you would be able to do the same sort of thing with curves adjustments in like a Lumetri color or something like that in a different program. So let's go to the curves tab and I generally use the curves tab to build what I wanna build here. And what I wanna do is I just wanna expand these sort of top highlights here and this level here of the lows, uh, the shadows and stuff. So all I wanna do is I wanna pull down the shadows a bit, bring them down to maybe around about there, and then I wanna pull up the highlights. And I'm happy for that to clip, um, you know, the highlights as well. And I'll just pull up a little more of the shadows. And something like that is pretty good. Now I can also reduce a little bit of that haze and, and fade on the image, basically stretching the highlights a little bit there. So something like that as the first grade or the first node um, there. And then I wanna add another node and I'm gonna correct for the saturation. So here I also use curves because what I like about curves is, this is saturation versus saturation is I can push this all the way to the top and it kind of gives me almost like a maximum that I should go, you know, a maximum level that I should go. So if I go any, any, you know, more than that, it's going to be over, over saturated. If I go, you know, halfway, it's going to be, feel like it's going to be under saturated. So I like it because I can push it all the way up to the top and I can dial in like a saturation. Uh, and then what I probably will add as well is another um, node in here where I will uh, I'll deselect this as well just so I can see everything all together. I'll add another node in here and I'm going to add to this node my um, color correction. So I feel like it's going a little bit towards the orange uh, and so I'm going to add a little bit of a color correction in here. I'm just going to use the offset uh, and just basically push it a little bit towards the blue just to take away a little bit of that yellowy kind of look that the footage has. And that is sort of where I 
I'm pretty happy with landing on my base grade for this footage. So if we go back to the original footage, and I'll just turn off all these nodes. That's just using option D on a Apple. So that's sort of, if I go all the way now up, that's sort of my base grade to this footage. And if you look at the scopes, everything is really good in range, except obviously this window, which we've talked about already, but everything else is really nicely in range and I'm not pushing anything too hard or too soft. I probably want to expose it a little bit more than this as well. So I'm going to actually bring up the first node and just bring up the exposure just a little bit, just to get a little bit more exposure. And then I'll come back to the curves on this second node as well. And I'll just bring a little bit of those shadows out. Just cut a bit of the hue out of those shadows before they clip. And that is pretty much how I dial in like a Rec 709 look. So at this point, this is, you know, nearly at a deliverable stage, but there's a little bit missing, I feel like in this image. And I like to kind of have a little bit more pop in the saturation and those sort of things. So this is where I would keep all these together as my first kind of correction for this to get this into a Rec 709 image. And then I would add some different corrections from here. So I'm gonna pop this over here, just onto the stalk here, but then basically start another layer of corrections. And this is where I'm gonna add in some different things uh, and get the skin tone where I want it to be, get the, um, you know, the image looking a little bit nicer and put some artistic flair onto the image as well. So here I would basically add in a circle like this. And on this node, I want to add sharpness. So I'm going to sharpen this up quite a lot. down to maybe 46. So just to sharpen up, if you look there, that's with it off, with it on, with it off, with it on. It doesn't do a lot, but it just gives it a little bit more pop. I'm gonna add another node, and I'm going to use the exact same one that I used here. So copy and paste the correction. I'm going to remove the sharpness I'm gonna to go to here and I'm gonna invert from here. And here I wanna add a little bit more saturation because I think it requires a little bit more and a little bit more pop. So I'm actually going to create another curve, go back to saturation, and I'm gonna add another round of saturation. And I'm just wanting to get a little bit more out of the um, furniture, of the, my T-shirt, you know, a little bit more saturation and in terms of the uh in terms of the window there i can actually you know reduce the feather a little bit because all i want is for it not to go too much onto my skin tones uh, because i don't want to oversaturate skin i'm happy to oversaturate the rest of the shot but not so much skin tones and so if we look at that full screen then with everything off, that's the original. And this is my color graded image. We're starting to look good. Now there's a little bit of gray sort of hue still in the skin tones. So what I can do to boost that is I can go back to my correction of the skin where I did the curves, my main curves adjustment. And I can just add in this section. Where's my curves adjustment, there it is there. So I've already maxed out my saturation in that curves adjustment. So what I can do is I can just add in a little bit of saturation in the uh, additional uh, controls down here. So I can just pull in a little bit of saturation there. And I don't wanna hit it too hard. I just wanna kinda of give it a really small amount, maybe about there. So it's giving me some color in the skin. Uh, some more color and that was like analogous to the room and the t-shirt I'm wearing as well. So 
that's sort of where I land in terms of the overall picture. So if I just turn off these two nodes and show you, that's the original, I kind of call that a Rec 709 transform uh, correction. So I'm getting it into a Rec 709 from the Canon Log 3. And then if I come and turn on these other two nodes, then I'm getting the sharpness onto the image now, as well as putting some more saturation in the surroundings, everything other than the skin tone. So the only other thing I wanna do is probably add a vignette to this. And so I'll go again on another line and I'm going to add in a, another window circular. And I'm gonna make this really nice and big with a nice big feather. So pull that out to quite a big feather and just adjust how I want this to kind of look. And then I'm just going to grab this offset slider and pull it down. Now I want to invert this as well. That's right, invert it. So I'm going sort of from the inside out as you can see here, but pull this down. I think I'm a little bit wide here, so come in a little bit and maybe want to just hero my face a little more there. So essentially that's with that off, that's with that on, that's probably a little bit too hard, a little bit too much. So what I do is I would just pull it up a little more. So I don't want to, you know, draw it out too much. So just a little bit of a pop to kind of bring me in frame a little bit more than usual. Um, as you can see, that's without, that's with, just to pull me a little bit closer in uh, the frame. That is how I color grade um, this image. So jumping over to an image which is a little bit more um, normal for, for my stuff. Um, just my kind of general vlog image here. So there's a little small correction on this, which is just a little bit of saturation, but I'll just turn that back to zero. Uh, sorry, I'll turn that back to 50. 50, so there's the log image. And I wanna then add corrector. So this is the second way that I would look at this footage when I'm using DaVinci Resolve specifically for this. So if you don't use Resolve, then there might be a different way for you to go about this, but just to show you how I would go about it. Uh, basically, I'm gonna go open effects and I'm going to drag color space transform onto this node. And what I know is I shot this in Canon Log 3. So I'm going to look for my Canon Cinema Gamut. That's what I shot it in and I'm gonna scroll down and find Canon Log 3. My timeline, I know I want it to be sRGB. I think it's called Rec 709 Scene, but sRGB is fine. So I just go and select that to make sure the gamma and everything's right, and it is, it looks okay. So that's my first adjustment, is just that color space transform. And that is already giving me a Rec 709 look to the footage. So whilst it doesn't have the edge that I like on the footage, it's just generic within DaVinci Resolve, it gives me the look right out of the box for the Rec 709 as I got from the previous shot that we did. It took me a few more steps to get this, but I've got it here right out of the box. So then from here, I can then add my correction for my saturation. Uh, so this one, sorry, is gonna be for sharpening. So I'm gonna sharpen this up uh, to what I want. And I don't wanna sharpen the whole image uh, because I'm happy for this just to sharpen the subject and that's a cool thing because that actually brings the subject you know into the middle of the frame a little bit more as well and it matches the focal range that I had and the actual depth of field that I had as well on the footage I'm not trying to sharpen any of this which it was out of focus anyway so that's sort of how I do that so that's off that's on off and aren't really subtle, but just gives that little bit of pop to the footage because I'm shooting here in 4K fine, which is already really quite sharp. So adding another node, then I'm going to, again, copy that adjustment, add it to there, remove the sharpness from that adjustment, 
and I'm going to then go over to the saturation. Sorry, before I do that, I'm going to invert it because I only want the rest of the image and then over to my saturation and I'm gonna add in some more saturation. Give this more of a pop than would otherwise be. And you can see that doesn't add it to my face, so the skin doesn't look weird, but it adds it to everything else. And if I just scroll through a little bit here, you can see how it doesn't look weird in my skin on my hands. It just kind of adds a little bit more saturation overall. And I think as well, I want a bit more saturation uh, in general. So I'm gonna go back to my initial correction, um, which is this one. I'm gonna add in node here and put it here. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of saturation in there as well, overall. So, and I can just adjust that with the rest and I can then go to my second saturation node and just bring that down a little bit because I've added in a bit overall. So that's kind of looking really, really good now. Super happy with that. Uh, but one more thing I wanna do is I just wanna add a vignette. So this is going to be kind of my third round of nodes here. And I'm going to jump on in and do a big vignette like I did before. Big creative vignette. And then just pull out some highlight, invert it. Pull out some highlight. So that's just to get my me kind of popping a little bit more in the frame and these you know darker edges here you don't need to see generally the detail down there and there and so that is my final image using color space transform on this particular one and the previous one just doing it from first principles uh, but that's how i color grade the footage on the canon r5 the c log 3 and I really like C-Log 3. I've actually felt like dealing with C-Log 1 was always a challenge, you know, from my previous videos that it's always challenging to get it right. But C-Log 3, it's a lot more forgiving. You can really push, if you look at the waveform I've got here, you can really push that down, you know, further than you would think you can in the shadows. And also you can kind of clip highlights as well. And it doesn't look terrible. It's a very forgiving log profile and I really enjoy working with C-Log3. So hopefully you got some value from this video about how simple it is really to color grade the footage. You should definitely shoot in Canon Log for anything you're doing. It's a game changer. Thank you so much for watching. And if you got value from this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.